Hey there everyone, it's Ryan with Frontline Animal Removal. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. So it is Super Bowl Sunday and I'm out working, checking traps and picking up critters. And I would like to, well, we'll talk a little bit of philosophy, ancient history, and how trapping and the Super Bowl are related. Now you may not think the Super Bowl have anything to do with some goofball nuisance trapper riding around a truck, but it does. So I want to tie this all together in a very absurd manner. So let us begin. So today, millions of people across the United States, and I'm sure some other countries outside of the United States, will be watching the Super Bowl. And if you step back and examine, examine the Super Bowl from outside perspective, what do you see? You see millions of people gathered around televisions, eating snack food and celebrating things that are happening on the screen. And then you have thousands of people sitting inside of a stadium, cheering on their teams and their favorite athletes. And those athletes are thrown around a little pigskin on a green piece of grass. And what sort of activities on that little green piece of grass do people get most excited about? Well, they get really excited when, you know, someone scores points, obviously. But who do they focus on the most? They focused on, they focus on the quarterback. And they really focus on the quarterback's ability to throw. So how does some dude's ability to throw relate to nuisance trapping? Well, let's examine history. We're going to go way back in time. What is throwing, anyways? You pick up an object and you chuck it. But that's not the end of it. When you throw it, you're, you're trying to hit something. You're trying to get it to a target. You're trying to place it on a target. You're trying to strike something. Well, why? Why do we do this? Well, as it turns out, throwing is one of the most ancient techniques for human beings to hunt. Now, you may not think of throwing as hunting, but there was a period of time before people had tools, before they had spears and bows and arrows and slingshots and arrowheads how did they hunt their prey? Well, our ancient humans first began picking up objects, probably rocks, and they would throw them at the animals they were pursuing. And they were hoping to hit them hard enough and accurately enough to subdue them and get a meal. And the good hunters, the ones that could hit the targets, were the ones that survived. And over time, good hunters began to be held in high regard. Well, in today's modern age, hunting really isn't a thing. It's only like 7 or 8% of the people hunt anymore. And what do we hold up in place of hunting? We hold up great athletes. And what does a great athlete do? They throw. That's right, they throw. In basketball, it's about throwing a ball through a circle. Football is about dropping a pass into the wide receiver's hands quickly and accurately, often while that wide, wide receiver is running at probably 20 plus miles per hour. In baseball, it's about how accurately the pitcher can throw the ball past the plate where some guy is trying to hit it with a stick. Um, you have the sport of volleyball, where they don't throw the ball per se, but they strike it and try to hit it 
onto the other side's game of play or area of play or court. That's a type of throwing. In tennis, they don't use their hand, they use a racket. And a racket is an extension of the hand. And they're trying to strike the ball <clears throat> across the net. Same with badminton. Same with table tennis. And then you have cricket, which is very popular in other parts of the world. But it's like baseball. You're pitching a ball towards a batter and trying to strike some sticks. The batter's trying to strike the ball. So all these sports have throwing in common. You know, people go to bars and bowling alleys to throw um, darts or to throw uh, lightly hatchets at a board or throw a bowling ball down an alley and try to strike balls accurately. These are all throwing sports. And so since throwing is the most ancient form of hunting, it is deeply ingrained with us to celebrate that activity. Now, as hunting became more modern, we started using guns and crossbows and bows and arrows. Well, a bow and arrow just simply turns that throw into a more powerful and a longer distance throw. The same with a gun. All a gun is is a device that does a simulated or artificial throw for us. It's just a more powerful, longer distance throw. If you went way back in time where the ancients had to throw a rock at a uh, gazelle to hunt it, you know, if you said, hey, if you could throw something at a thousand miles per hour and hit it from 200 yards away, they would jump all over that because that meant that they would survive and have more food. So when people are watching a sporting event today, they're watching athletes. And athletes are nothing more than great hunters. If you took those athletes and put them back in time a couple thousand years ago, and you gave them rocks, or you gave them a, a, a spear, or you know a bow and arrow, they would have gone out and they would have been that villages, that tribes, that community's top hunter. That's what they would have been. And they would have been celebrated back then as well. So how does this talk of throwing and hunting and sports tie into trapping? Trapping is nothing more than a form of hunting. Instead of throwing, we use devices. We use cages. We use snares. We use um, <clears throat> leg hold traps. We use colony traps. Um, we use powered snares. These are all forms of catching animals. And there was a time in history where fur trappers would go out and trap animals for their pelts. And they made very good living. Um, and some of them could become wealthy off of trapping, believe it or not. At one time, a fur, one single fur, would have been an entire month's wages. And you have great trappers could go out and catch many, many animals and have many, many pelts and make a very good living. Um, equivalent to your average professional athlete today. And if you're not into hunting, and if you, let's say you're an animal, you love animals and you don't eat meat, but you love sports, and you get excited when you watch those touchdowns or someone sinks a basket or you know someone um, hits a home run. If you love sports and celebrate those activities, deep down inside you, you have the ancient desire to hunt. You just don't realize it because you've transferred those an an ancient desires to hunt into an athletic event. And an athletic event is nothing more than a celebration of the ancient hunting skills. So that's my deep dive into how trapping and hunting and sports are all related and kind of the same. So when you're watching that 
quarterback to throw that ball deep down inside. He's throwing a spear and hitting Gazelle. When you watch that baseball player wind up and throw that pitch, he's pulling back an arrow and shooting a buffalo. Uh, when you watch any athletic event where it requires a throw, you're watching an ancient, uh, the ancient art of hunting. And that's how it relates to trapping, because it's all the same. Thank you.